since then, I've read many more job descriptions on the kids' dream. You think, oh yeah, yada, 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 you know, it's all, it's all in there. And it's sort of filter. But if you, you know, if you, if somebody met you and knew that you had the skills and the personality to work all that stuff out, then you should not be put off with most of these things. Okay. Yes. How much were your communication skills and presentation skills, how much do you think those played into your getting a job there? They were important to that process? Or, um, or have you used them since? I, ha I don't do presentation at all. So something's interesting is I have, I have a wonderful boss. He's just, everyone I work with is, is, is super, a really nice group of people. The boss is particularly great. And I, I know I really won't be my boss forever, so I'm really trying to enjoy it. But he came up the other day and he said, oh, I know what I want you to do. Um, has anybody come across a book called Strengths Finder? Well, uh, I bought this book and um, in the back of the book is a little code. You go to the Strengths Finder 2.0 website and you spend about 35 minutes answering questions. And it's trying, it's a personality test. It's trying to find out uh, where, what your strengths are, what sort of person you are, how you like to perform, etc., etc. And it spits out five different, um, your top five. I don't think, I haven't worked out how to see what, how it is in all the other things. But, um, and I gave this to Stephen, and uh, he was very interested. Wow, oh my goodness, we have to, it, it, it gave him insight into parts of me that he hadn't really thought about, which was quite interesting. And he started saying, well, I wonder how to put you in front of the customer more. And I hadn't really thought about that. And I do love, I like working with people. I also like working with this nerdy stuff. Um, so how that's going to work out, I don't know, because everything, a lot of what we do at the moment is very remote. We're not going really to interface with the client. But um, I do think we should be, to do our job properly, we should be asking a lot more questions about the buildings that we're trying to identify and analyze. And that would be, that would mean client-facing stuff. I think we should be doing a lot more of that. So I've got, I've got opinions about that. Um, so that may go, I don't know answering your question at all, really, but... Well, no, that's really helpful because a lot of um, the work students are doing in the class is sort of that team-based work, working with the client. Yes. Stuff. Fit is the word that I think um, gets you a job. You know, Jess is secure, secure had long enough as a teacher in our class to work out that Melissa and I would be a fit in the team, or think we would be a fit in the team. Um, and then, you know, he also must have decided that the rest could be taught. So. Employers aren't always looking for somebody that already knows everything they want them to do. Um, it's, which is very comforting, because <laughs> you can't learn everything, you know, in, in this situation. You can't learn what, what goes on in a real job. And there are plenty of jobs like being optometrist, where it's very clear what you have to know, what to do. And you do learn in your classes, um, but you don't learn. They can't teach you how to um, interface with a patient and get out of the patient everything you need to know, um, which is, is uh, that, you know, that comes with the practice. Something I wanted to talk about is, um, I don't know, how, how many of you are um, sort of in a, in a career break? How many of you, how, well, first of all, how many of you are doing, are, are looking at completely different careers? Are you looking to change? No? And um, how many of you are working at the moment? Are you working in the field that you expect to do after Cascadia? Or are you doing a job to pay the, the, the tuition bills? Sure, both. I work, yeah. I work here. You work here? Okay. Good. Only, um, do not undervalue volunteerism. I can't say enough about how much, I didn't realize at the time, how much I was learning and how much I was um, prepping myself in those years when I was a, a let's face it, a soccer mom. I was um, not working, raising my kids. I was um, very involved in um, all the cliches, PTSA, a Girl Scout leader for eight or nine years. Um, my children were very involved in sports. Um, they went to a school um, where parents had to volunteer three, 30 hours of the year to 
do as, as part of being at a school, a state school, but, you know, a public school. Um, and I was just incredibly busy, just doing all this stuff. Some of those jobs I roles I had um, involved desktop publishing skills. So I learned how to, you know, taught myself how to use Word and Publisher and, and, and that sort of thing. And um, organizing groups, that is incredibly hard and very valuable. You know, writing emails, nothing, not too many emails, <laughs> so people don't read them anymore, but enough emails so that you can avoid too many meetings and getting the Girl Scouts, for instance, to, to, you know, together too much, too much, too much, they'll start leaving, their parents will handle it, that sort of thing. So organizing communities is um, one way of, of volunteering. And I found um, that the things I learned doing that have been very helpful, just trying to work out how to communicate with people, um, how, how to put things down for newsletters, how to sell things to people, how to encourage them, how to try and get them to come along. When I was here at Cascadia, um, I was one of the founders of the Cascadia Sustainable Energy Club. And uh, we, had a, we had a good time. We had some speakers and we did some um, field trips and, uh, and that sort of thing. And that was another area where it, it's, it's hard communicating with a big group of people and trying to get join things along, especially when at a community college where people's schedules are so scattered. That, that's difficult. Um, other things I did with my time, I went to a lot of events and lectures, and um, I love that sort of thing. Last night, I went to a free one in uh, the Intimate Theatre down in the Seattle Centre. And Dennis Hayes, does anyone know who Dennis Hayes is? He founded it, he's the first Earth Day, and he, um, he's in his early 70s now. He runs the Bullet Foundation in Seattle. And they are, uh, does anyone know about the Living Building Challenge? Yeah? So Jason McLennan of the Living Building Challenge Institute was the other speaker, and the two of them were presenting about the Bullet Foundation's new headquarters. It's a building, I don't think it's finished yet, but it's going to be, um, it's off the scale of that in the lead, in order to bother in the lead. And it was, it was fascinating, that sort of thing. I go to things like that because they, they give me positive energy, they, I sometimes I meet other people, to see other people in the, in the green industry who are um, interested in the same sort of things. And you just never know where it's going to be. Um, fun. I did, oh, that's something else I did. I did, um, of my own volition, um, I found out about the LEED AP window and snuck through that. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Well, LEED is uh, Leadership in Environmental and Eng uh, Energy and Environmental Design. So it's a rating system that's um, being, it's the child of the US Green Building Council. And it's getting a huge amount of traction now. Our, our, our uh, GLA over there is, has it got lead yet? I don't think you know. They're holding up the lead of the solar. That's board. right, yes. Okay, that'll be for the last couple of points, yeah. yes. And that will mean they get platinum, platinum? yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah. So it's a rating system for buildings. And then um, there's a rating system, if you like, there's a, an accreditation system for the people who learn how to do the lead system. And they're called lead APs, at least they were. They, what they were doing was uh, you, you do a lot of studying and uh, take a, a very tricky exam and become a lead AP. And they decided that you should have to be in the green building industry to get that. So they were going to do a cutoff. And people like me decided to sneak through to a whole bunch of people across the country that managed to cram and somehow get through this test before they closed the window. And I was really lucky about that. So now I'm in the state where I have to keep that up and you know, keep those AP letters lead AP letters off my name. But it's it's a really handy thing to have and check that box. Now any of you guys could aspire to uh, lead GA, Green Associate, which is a, a, an easier level. You still have to have some sort of experience um, in the green building industry, but there are, there are ways of getting that through, through different companies and connections and things. And then, um, well, other layers after that, but that really helped. Um, and I went along to various events and met people and so on. Something else I did was Carbon Masters, and that was through the Washington, Washington State University Extension. That was a volunteer um, program. They, uh, 
classes were at Cascadia, actually, and a group of us were trained in all things carbon, and uh, we had um, set up projects uh, to mitigate carbon. And it's really an outreach thing. You know, we, we, we're trying to help people in the public understand that the problems and what we can do about that. That was a good way of uh, meeting more people who were like-minded. Um, Sustainable Seattle, I went to a lot of their events. They do a lot of training things. I, I, I'm very, I am very interested in uh, triple bottom line and um, CSR, blanking what it stands for, corporate social responsibility. Um, life cycle analysis is something else that I was interested in. So when I was here taking the classes, not knowing how this was going to end up, I was just trying different things as I've heard about them through organizations like Sustainable Seattle and I'd go along to things and try them out and kiss a few frogs and occasionally a prince. <laughs> um, and you can't do it all. There's the trouble. There's so many different things in the, in the sustainability world. And I'm really bad at saying no. But um, eventually I ended up with energy. And uh, it's a good fit for me. I really, really like it. I'd like to know Well, they go together, of course. Right, you've got to have the efficiency yeah, before you, 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 the you generation. Save as much as you can so that right. you, you can afford the renewable. Right. So you need less of it, yeah. So it's definitely the um, efficiency geek, but also I love the renewables. Um, so I've kind of had a multi prong yep. look at it. But, uh, yeah. Um, well, like you had just said, there's so much you know, and you, you it's can't overwhelming. do it all. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I, I really haven't found any particular thing that I, you know, am any more passionate about than the rest of it. So I think a lot of it for me is just going to be what's available. Yes. You know, and then from there, uh, you know, once I get, you know, stay with the workforce, then see, you know, what that for needs or just, you know, do that more soul searching so I can continue my education. But um, right now, we're
So we in Active Energy Management, we make these recommendations and, and are they going to be put into practice and for how long? Who will make sure that in a few weeks' time or a year's time, somebody hasn't just come over and overridden the thing again? We haven't, we haven't worked that out yet. Without being a, a, a spy <laughs> and, and, and very sort of bossy, it's, um, it's hard to work out. And the answer's got to lie somehow in smart meters and, and so on. Oh, something I didn't mention at all was another part of what we're doing is um, populating our clients' buildings with submeters, interval meters, and, and get that data goes into our database as well. And, then, and it lines up with the build meters at the same time because uh, obviously you can be much more. Uh, in real time, proactive if you've got interval data coming in. One piece that um, we've been doing some work with and, and actually next year plan to expand on is um, kind of the, the um, area between ETSP and the web application, which is energy informatics. Oh my goodness. And you mentioned a little bit yeah. of it with the dashboard component. Yes. And I think, I think that goes toward that idea of how do you help people keep yes keep moving in the right direction is by helping them understand what their choices yes. mean in terms of the energy use in ways that are really relevant. And yeah. so there's this this bridge between having people who can help understand what those tweaks are in the ETSP and the folks who can help design the, the databases, yeah. the interfaces that help people actually see that data in a meaningful way. Um, we this is the problem we have with our dashboard. Who's our audience? Is it right. is it the third grader looking up trying to see if her school's better than you know her soccer player mate is at a different school or whatever, or is it the um, the guy in facilities who's trying to damn it my school's going to use less energy than you know the other school and he needs of course a different set of information. Is it the teachers? Is it the parents? It's really hard to know how. Who our audience is, and how to present it, and how what dumbed down to make it look, how how crisp and um, accurate to make it, etc., etc. It's, it's and that's something we struggle with internally. Um, people, the people <laughs> at the sales end don't have a clue how much work it is to get this thing to, to be fair. <laughs> to have the, you know, in order to be fair, if you're introducing competition, uh, especially with dollars involved, you know, it's, it's all got to be accurate, um, and that. Harder than we thought. Mm -hmm. But yes, anything you can learn in those departments is, is gold. It's really, it's got to be very valuable. Would you like to have had a, a database course, say, for yes. example, for your job? Yes. Yes, definitely, definitely. Something I need to learn is SQL. You know, that's on my school list. Of, well, I need to get better in Excel as well, and I love doing all that, but then right. it's, uh, it's hard to find the time. I could just wind about, you know, it's just, I've just got to get Eventually, but um, I could spend a lot more time learning things like that. <laughs> Anyone got any more questions? Yeah. Were there software tricks? Um, I know macros are, you know, if you learn a macro, it can save like a couple hours of time or um, keystroke tricks in software or what's there stuff like that that really saves time with? Yes, I, macros is also on my list of things to learn. Definitely, I, I wish I could do that. It, as, because we work as a team, you know, there's a couple of people who can help you out with something like that if it's going to be worthwhile and so on. Um, we ought to have us, you know, when our tools are improved, loading these big chunks of data that I get will be much simpler and more straightforward. I won't have to manipulate my spreadsheets create these special formats and things so much, but while I do, I'm, you know, I'm learning. What I comfort myself when I'm wishing that it was easier with the fact that if you just show up and everything's perfect and it's just, you know, here you go, here's the tool, then you don't actually learn, you don't appreciate what's behind it and you don't understand it nearly as well. So I'm gaining a real understanding of what I'm putting into the database and how to, everything I've learned is going to be very useful when I'm switch over to this outsourcing this, this piece, um, I'll be able to spot a bad bill and a good bill and a typical bill as the new ones come along. Something I haven't mentioned is the um, 
the greenhouse gas inventory. Um, I, I, I think there's a couple of interns doing that now for de-slimy, is that right? Stands upstairs right now, but I don't know. Well, that was an opportunity that was was really neat to get here. You know, um, these lining needed the. Uh, I'm forgetting what it's called really now. I was going to bring, try to find my board that I had to present at the end of the last. Um, capstone. Yes, that's sort of, yeah the capstone thing because it was all the little bits and pieces that I did were on there. And I can't really remember. Um, but Melissa and I, we were um, student members of the. Environmental Committee, I, I don't know if that's still going, but that was valuable work and um, a valuable experience. And we also um, gathered all the data and put it into the uh, campus carbon calculator for the campus, um, or the cascade is part of the campus. It was extra complicated because the building could be shared with the job. Um, and that was really good. That's something I could, I could really get into, was the carbon accounting. I looked very seriously at that um, before other things came along. It's, I don't know whether it's an avenue that, um, where the jobs will really be. It's, it's a huge need for it, but uh, until we're forced into things, until we're forced, you know, legislation comes along, and people have to um, get it done. It's a bit of a luxury. Yes. Have you seen uh, any organizations that are trying to like have more um, of their employee or public awareness via the dashboard system, like either in their building, in their campus. Uh, like Amazon has that huge thing. Do you mean energy-wise? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen them, but I McKinstry definitely has a, a dashboard development project. And they are developing dashboards that they expect their clients to want in their foyer. So that most about what they're saving. And again, it's the same problem. It's, it's going to make sure it's useful to the facilities uh, and to the Joe public, or depending on who's using the building. Well, I think, have you been over to um, 21 Acres um, here in Woodenville? Their new building, it's a um, really energy efficient building. Um, some of the ETSP students and BIT students here worked on the dashboard. That's, that's in right. there for they you. Did, yes. And we, they, 